Hey guys, Joe Hubbard here, coming at you today from the Anaheim Hilton at the 2018 NAMM show. Now we're doing something a little bit different here today because I'm not in the comfort of my own home studio, but I'm here in sunny California at the NAMM show. I'm going to have lots of cool things to share with you in the next few weeks. Lots of clips, lots of uh, podcast things that I'm doing with some bass players and also with some other musicians as well, well-known guys that have played with everyone to give you a little bit of an insight on what other uh, players expect from bass players. So look out for all that stuff. It's going to be really, really cool. Um, I'm also doing a gig while I'm here on Saturday night. So uh, if you are in the area, uh, check it out. It's in Anaheim. It's a place called The Parks. And I'm playing with the great Brazilian drummer Julio Figueroa and his band. So this is going to be a really cool night. Um, what I wanted to share with you guys today is uh, something to do with traveling with your bass. This comes up a lot. A lot of people ask me about this. And if you show up at the airport and you think you're going to get your bass on the plane and you got it in a gig bag in the horror if you have to stick that through and check it as baggage because it usually comes out on the other end in a bunch of pieces. So a couple of years ago I was at the Warwick Base Camp and we had a Q&A symposium at the end of the camp and one of the questions was what do you do if you get to the uh, gate and they won't let you on with your base and uh, Steve Bailey was there and he basically said that at the end of the day what you should say is ask to ask the captain uh, whether or not it's okay because apparently according to Steve the captain has the final say of what goes on the plane so if you've got some guy you know who's just telling you that it's not gonna work you can actually use that so I went up to the gate at Heathrow to come uh, we were on Swiss Airlines and, um, uh, you know, I had my base and the, the guy at the gate said, you know, you're going to have to check that as baggage. And, um, you know, I said, well, you know, it's a really expensive instrument. And isn't there some way that we can sort of get this on? I've done this loads of times before. They were like, no, the guy was adamant. They weren't going to let me uh, do it. And uh, there's a couple other people at the gate as well. They all kind of chimed in. No, no, no. Uh, it's too big. It's this. It's not going to fit in the overhead compartment. The same old stories. So I just remembered that thing Steve Bailey told me. And I said, look, well, can we at least ask the captain? Because as you know, he has the final say. And these guys, the four people there, they all looked at each other like, how the hell did he know that? And uh, it was so funny. The guy then just took the bass. He said, well, I'm going to go ask the captain. And uh, he went down, came back up, said, yeah, the captain said you're good to go. So I was the first guy on the plane because the check-in, the boarding, rather, had just started. They took my ticket, went on the plane. There was plenty of room, and, uh, and it got on. So that's a great tip. I'll remember that when you fly, that the captain actually has the final say. Now, I guess he could say no, but you know what, there's so much room on those planes and a lot of times you get these kind of bureaucratic guys on that gate that just go say, you know, a rule is a rule and we're not going to let you on. It just makes their life easier. So that's kind of a cool story to, to take to heart. So another tip that I wanted to share with you guys today, and I get questions about this all the time from people who write to me or people who are actually studying with me, and that's like, what can you do uh, as hand stretching exercises to get your hands and keep your hands to stay healthy. And one of the things I do are really just uh, digit circles. And the way that you do this effectively is you want to stabilize your forearm. So, you know, put a hand on your forearm so your forearm's not moving around. And then you're just moving each digit in a circular motion one way and then back the other way. And then try to isolate it. It's kind of hard to not get some of the other fingers to move. But after a while, you can get it so it's not so bad. It's pretty isolated. You see there's a little movement going on, but mainly focusing on the middle finger there. Got my ring finger here. That's hard to get that not to move the other fingers. And then the little finger is going there, that's still quite hard too, you know, but see, when you just kind of do that, 
and you're moving those fingers, that's very good for your hand. Another good thing too is do the same thing, stabilize your, your forearm and then just do wrist circles. Forward and backwards. You know, you could do like 50 repetitions of this. So the main thing to aim for is keeping a straight wrist with both your right hand and your left hand when you're playing. I've got some videos on my YouTube channel that kind of go into that in more depth. But that's really the, what you want to strive for. And it's not just with playing bass. It's also when you're working at the computer. So uh, what I really recommend is for a mouse is these things called the vertical mouse. And you can see this here. This kind of lays flat on the table like this. And then you would hold it in your hand in this way. And so it kind of keeps the wrist much straighter when you're working. I can use the roller here. It's, you can click here uh, to you know, do your edits and stuff. And if you're working a lot with Pro Tools or you're working with your, um, with your Sibelius, uh, you're going to be using a mouse quite a bit. And you know, if you don't have the right angle on your wrist, you can get repetitive strain syndrome for that. So you really want to be conscious and cognizant of keeping these wrists straight and not kind of you know bending the wrists so you know you get this uh, loosening of this um, the sheaths uh, that wrap around the tendons that are then connected to the ligaments uh, this is super important to keep healthy so anyway um, I'm going to come back to you uh, next week with some a lot more cool stuff from Nam uh, keep you updated on all this stuff. So until next time, practice smart, work hard, and play creatively.